Hi, it's Tom from TNB Tech. In this video, I'm going to add a dry contact sensor to an existing sensor node. So let's get started. We've been talking about sensor node, the easy way to attach common home automation sensors to Home Assistant. If you're interested in getting your own sensor node, click on the link in the description below to be notified when the sensor node Kickstarter goes live. You're going to want to jump on that as soon as possible because I'm going to have some early bird specials which are going to have really severely limited quantities and if you really want to get the best deal you want to have to go there as soon as the Kickstarter launches. Now back to the video. Here we have our sensor node. Currently it's installed, running on Home Assistant, but there's no sensors. You can see the status LED is, is flashing approximately 2 hertz, indicating it's attached to Home Assistant and operating properly. Over on the Home Assistant dashboard, this is the sensor node. It says YouTube demo. 3237 is the last four digits of the unique ID. And it says sensor node under type. No sensors found. So let's attach a dry contact sensor. But first, what exactly is a dry contact sensor? Well, it's essentially any sensor that when actuated basically shorts two contacts together or two wires together. There's a lot of examples of this. They could be a door window sensor, the kind you see for home alarms, sort of like these. You could also be a, a level or a float sensor like this one, and the little float goes up and down. It basically shorts these two wires together. A vibration sensor, the same thing when there's a vibration, shorts two wires together. It can also be something like this. This is what we're going to use today. Basically, this is a momentary push button that takes these two wires. Normally, it's a normally open momentarily push button, which means normally these wires are not shorted together, but when I hold this button down, as long as I have the button down, these wires are essentially shorted together. But what makes a dry contact sensor dry? Dry basically means the sensor supplies no power to the receiver. It doesn't ha it's, it's a passive sensor. There is no voltage or current being utilized or supplied by the sensor, so therefore it's dry. That's what all these sensors are. They're all the same thing. They short two wires together, either normally open or normally close. The process for connecting up the dry contact sensors is the same regardless of which one you're using, but for today we're going to use this. So let's go. To attach the sensor to your sensor node, first turn off the power, and then pop off the cover, like that. You don't really need to pop the top off, but I kind of want to show you what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this dry contact sensor, these two wires, to S1 here, which is this connector right here. It says dry contact on the circuit board, and it's these two terminals of this terminal block right here. It doesn't matter which one you connect to which because, as I said before, it's passive, and all it's doing is showing the two, it's sensing that the two, uh, conductors are shorted together so it doesn't matter. So you just make sure that the the screw terminals are open as wide as they can be. You stick one in on one side. It doesn't like I said it doesn't matter which one you stick in. You stick the other one on the other side and you screw the terminals down nicely. Okay? So now the dry contact sensor is installed. But in order for it to show up at Home Assistant, you have to enable it. You have to tell Sensor Node that you really want to have a dry contact sensor that's attached to those terminals reporting into Home Assistant. So to do that, we force Sensor Node into access point mode and we go to the configuration server and we adjust its settings. That's where this switch comes in. This is called the Force AP switch basically allows you to force sensor node into access point mode so you can examine or adjust any settings you want. So to do this, before we turn sensor node back on, you merely put the switch down. You can see here on the circuit board, it's switch 2 and it has, the mode is normal if it's up and access, po access mode if it's down. So we're going to put it down and we're going to turn sensor node back on. I'm going to flip that thing up so you can actually see the see the LED. You can confirm it's in access point mode because the status LED is flashing twice as fast, approximately 4 hertz. So once the access point is running, we simply attach to it with any phone or computer. So over here on the computer, we go to our Wi-Fi settings, 
and we see if we can select it. There it is, sensor node. You can see it's sensor node, the access point says sensor node with some long unique identifier number behind it. So we just click on it and we attach to that access point, and now we're attached to the sensor node configuration server. So the next thing we do is just go to a browser, open up a tab, and we type in the access point address, which is 192. 92.168.4.1. It opens up to the sensor node configuration server. So you just scroll down to the set sensor settings area and you click on the text that says connector S1 contact sensor settings. Once you get here, you can you can adjust a few things, but the most important thing is the enable. So where it says contact sensor enable, you select the drop down and you select enabled. You're essentially done, but you can do a couple other things. You can change the friendly name of the sensor that is reported to Home Assistant. It defaults to contact sensor, but you can put anything else you want. Let's put like YouTube demo contact sensor, like that. You can also adjust the sensor close time in seconds. The minimum is two seconds and that's hard coded, but if you wanted to go into the code and change it, you could. But the maximum can be pretty much anything, although I haven't tested anything over a few seconds because it doesn't make any sense. But basically, that's the time that the sensor will, the contact will report as being closed to Home Assistant. Sensor Note has a high speed latch attached to the S1 connector so that even if you have like a little pulse or a little, little very short duration pulse on that contact closure, it will capture it and it will report a minimum of two second closure to Home Assistant. Once you're done with all that, you just hit submit and return to home page or to the main page and you go back to here. Since everything's all, you don't really need to change anything else since it's already on Home Assistant. You need to change credentials or anything. All you do now is you have to co click submit and restart to restart the whole thing. But first, make sure over here that this switch is flicked into normal mode. Otherwise, it's just going to keep restarting into access point mode, and that's no fun. So now that it's in normal mode, I'm going to put the lid back like that. I can go back to the access, uh, the configuration server, and I can click Submit and Restart. Boom, and it says, okay, I'm going to restart, and I'm going to attach to your local Wi-Fi network. So what it'll do is it'll attach the network, and then instead of just reporting the sensor node device with no sensors, it'll report it with a contact closure sensor. First we check, make sure it's running, and you can see over here, the status LED is now blinking slower, approximately two hertz, and that means that it's connected to the Wi-Fi, it's connected to Home Assistant, and everything's working. So let's go over to the Home Assistant overview dashboard and see what it says. Over here you can still see Sensor 3237 YouTube demo, is still there as before. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, here it is, way down here at the bottom, YouTube demo contact sensor, 3237, so it's got the same four digits as the YouTube demo up here, 3237, because they're the same device. That's how we can make sure that we know which ones we're talking about. So if we click into that, we can see it says turned off, because when it comes online, it gives it status, it says what it is. I haven't touched anything. And it was two minutes ago. So if I come over to here and I just push the button, you can see that it just turned on. And then it turns back off two seconds later, approximately two seconds later, because that's what we programmed it to do. Now, what I can do is I can just hit this button over and over again multiple times, ba 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 and nothing really happens because it's it stayed on because it kept getting re-triggered. But eventually after I let go, it'll turn off. If I hold it down, it'll turn on and it'll stay on as long as I hold it down because it's on. And if I let it go, it'll wait the minimum time, which is two seconds, and it'll turn off. That's because this is a normally open contact sensor, right? There are, it will work with normally closed contact sensors as well. It'll just be closed all the time. It'll be on all the time until you actuate it, and then it'll go off. Okay, so now the other thing I want to show is in the attributes of the contact sensor, you click down, it'll say it's a contact sensor. It'll give the ID the unique ID of the whole thing, a firmware version, and it'll also show the closed duration that we programmed in, which was two seconds. The other thing I want to show is if you go back to the sensor node device 
and you look at that attribute. Remember the last time we looked, it said no sensors installed. We click down in there and we're gonna see it under type. It says sensor no, but now it says contact, which means there is one sensor. It's a contact sensor and that's installed. And we're done. So if you like what you've seen, don't forget to click in the description below to be taken to the Kickstarter pre-launch page for sensor node. There you'll be able to register to be notified when the, when the Kickstarter goes live because you're gonna to want to jump on that to get to those early word specials because there's not gonna be very many of them. In the next few videos, I'm gonna show how you can add other sensors to sensor node, temperature, motion, uh, water, even ice grid C combo temp humidity sensor. I'm also gonna show how you can take an existing sensor configuration sensor node and change from one sensor to another easily using the configuration server that we just saw. So stay tuned, but for now, thanks.